Ohio Gazayamas. I am Chaplain Mark Johnston, the 38th ADA Brigade Chaplain, coming to you today from beautiful Enoshima Island here in beautiful Japan. And as you can see, we have a Fujisan in the background to grace our presence today. Hey folks, this is Chaplain Malcolm Rios, 35th CSSB Chaplain and it's a great day to see you. You might recognize me from Chappie's Free Chicken. We're continuing a series of talks on resiliency and uh, ironically or appropriately, this is the 25th one for our um, Christmas talk. And we're continuing to talk about ways to remain resilient despite things that may be going on in your life, things that are going on in our own lives. And you may think, well, you're a chaplain in the United States Army in beautiful Japan. What could possibly be going on in your life that is uh, causing you to have to remain resilient? And I could go into the whole thing, but we don't have time for counseling today. Um, but this will be my eighth Christmas away from home in the last 12 years. And like anyone else, I miss my family too. I'm reminded of um, the very first Christmas story in the uh, Christian scriptures. Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth down to Bethlehem. And Mary, of course, was great with child. And as they traveled far away from home and they went to Bethlehem, there was no room for them there and Jesus was born there and placed in a manger, which is a feed trough. And sometimes people forget that also, not long after that, the uh, government there tried to kill him. And so Mary and Joseph and Jesus had to go into Egypt and stay there. We don't know, it may have been 10 years of exile there. So I think about that all the time when I think about Christmas. We always think about Christmas. I'll be home for Christmas. I'm not gonna sing it to you. I'll be home for Christmas is a famous uh, Christmas song that we hear this time of year. But some of us are not able to be home for Christmas. So what do we do? I was thinking about um, a Christmas that I had back in 2010. I was in Iraq and um, it was, um, I had a very unpleasant job there. I was the chaplain in charge of the mortuary affairs unit there. So our job was not the most pleasant thing to deal with on a sometimes daily basis. But I had two people there with me, um, PFC Abarca, well she was specialist Abarca then, and then uh, Staff Sergeant Promotable, she would be sure to want me to say that part at the time. Uh, Goulet. We worked together there in the Mortuary Affairs uh, Division uh, doing what we had to do there, but I've never worked with people who were more joyful and uh, thoughtful and resourceful and resilient than these two. These two ladies, these two soldiers got me through some very difficult times through laughter, through conversation, just through the times that we had and I remember the Christmas that we spent there together. We had a little bitty Christmas tree that my wife had sent us and she sent presents to all of us and they weren't much, they were just little things, but the joy that we had in that terrible place, opening up those Christmas presents and sharing them with each other. Just, you're not going to always get to be where you want to be. That's just the nature of life, especially life in the Army. So what you have to do is learn to enjoy the people that you're with. You'll find great friends, lifelong friends, wherever you are in the Army, wherever you happen to be in the world. You can choose to spend all your time bemoaning the fact that you're not home and be miserable. Or you can find people there who care about you that you care about and spend time enjoying uh, each other's company. Hey, I'm down here on Enoshima Island with my friend Mark Johnson who just shared with you a little bit about his perspective on, on the holiday season and Christmas. And uh, I just want to caveat off that with a little story. Uh, when I was younger, one of the most prized Christmas gifts I ever got was the Millennium Falcon. It was an awesome gift. I was so excited. And then every year after that, it seemed like Christmas just went downhill because I didn't get the cool presents. Yeah, even one year, and my wife tells me I shouldn't tell this story too often. <clears throat> I got cold for Christmas because things got so bad. But, um, but what I really want to share with you is the, the perspective that we have. You know, as I've gotten older, from being a kid, my perspective on Christmas, giving gifts, receiving gifts, all these things has changed. And being in the Army, obviously, as uh, Chaplain Johnson said, is you have a different perspective when you're away from home, away from the things that you really want to be around or that you're familiar with. And so, you know, as a dad now and with kids that really enjoy receiving gifts, one of my, my uh, most fun things to do is find that gift they really want what excites them. Kind of like when I got excited about the Millennium Falcon. And so when I do that, I get a, you know, that feel good feeling inside and the kids get excited and I get a pat on the back from my wife. Um, but when I don't do that, I also know um, that maybe I missed it a little bit. But all that going back to the perspective of how we see Christmas or how we see the holidays. Um, I can focus on that I can focus on other things such as where I'm at, you know, just like Chapman Johnson said, 
or I can just be thankful that I am alive. I have survived 2020. The majority of people I know that have survived 2020 and that we are not in a war where we are. And I'm thankful for that. Um, and it helps me consider the things that I'm missing, maybe not being home with my mom and dad or maybe not with the rest of my extended family. But I do have family here, you know, in my battalion, I have a lot of soldiers who have become friends uh, within the Zama community. I have a lot of, of individuals who I've met along the way who have become friends and, and family. And so I think we have to keep that in perspective and say, uh, yeah, we can't regret not being somewhere else and be thankful for the time and space where we're at and enjoy that, you know. We have to do that because if we don't, we can fall back and be under that heavy weight of, of missing things and, and just being depressed and being bummed out about life. So I encourage you all to look on the bright side of life. Uh, there's an old song that I, I used to hear played at the end of every Iron Maiden show, but it's a Monty Python song. Always look on the bright side of life. So I'm not gonna sing the rest. <laughs> But we need to do that. We need to look on the bright side of life because there are little things. Look for the little wins that can help you have a better perspective of where you're at in your time and space. This is the way. Yoi Ichinichio. Have a nice day. Happy holidays. This is Chaplain Malcolm Rios, 35th CSSB Chaplain. Yep. <laughs> How did you say it's pronounced correctly? Enoshima. 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 Egg, egg. All right. E and A. Eh, Enoshima. Enoshima. I'm down here at Enoshima Island, which is in the Sagami Bay, close to Camp Zama, Japan. I'm down here with my friend Mark and Sergeant Burke. She's my friend too now, but. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got to be this far apart. I'll say social distanced. So you still look taller because you. Are. I am taller. Yoi Ichinichio. Have a nice day. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs>